On page 76 is uh, ventricular tachycardia in your cardiac dysrhythmia interpretation workbook. Um, so let's talk about VTAC. Well, uh, for starters, um, this is a wide complex tachycardia, and the rate is usually between 120 and 150, but uh, you can have a slow VTAC uh, as slow as 100 beats per minute. So between 100 and 120 would be a slow VTAC. Typically, VTACs are at the 120 to 250 range. Rates greater than 250 are considered ventricular flutter. P waves are um, uh, absent, at least uh, we don't see P waves preceding each QRS. If there was a P wave preceding each QRS, then of course we'd have to consider that this is a supraventricular tachycardia with aberrancy. Uh, so P waves would not um, be there present uh, prior to each QRS and a VTAC. However, you may still see P waves. Uh, and if you do, uh, look for P waves that are equidistant, firing at a slower rate than the um, uh, than the heart rate, than the QRS rate. And um, when you see this, that's evidence that there's uh, AV dissociation, where P waves are marching through. And AV dissociation is, in fact, diagnostic VTAC. So what happens, essentially, is that in 50% in of VTACs, and I'll just draw this out here. Oops. So in about 50% of VTACs, we have an SA node that's uh, firing at a rate of, well, let's just say arbitrarily 80 beats per minute. And a focus down here in the ventricles will say arbitrarily is focus, uh, firing at a rate of 180. And what happens is we'll see evidence of atrial depolarization on the QRSs. So uh, again, I'm just going to draw this arbitrarily. It won't be accurate. But if you saw like a notch, evidence of a P wave here and then one here, and then one over here, and so on and so forth, where these P waves appear to be equidistant and disassociated from the QRSs, that would support the diagnosis of VTAC. That would be, in fact, diagnostic, diagnostic VTAC. In the other 50% of VTACs, there's a focus down on the ventricle, and it depolarizes the ventricle and the atria, so we don't see evidence of P waves. So, um, if you do see evidence of P waves and they're firing at a slower rate than the QRSs and they um, uh, are not associated with the QRSs, then you've got AV dissociation and that's diagnostic of VTAC. A P interval is not applicable. QRS is always wide at uh, 0.12 second or greater, typically 0.14 second. The ratio is not applicable, applicable because there are no P waves associated with the QRS. And the rhythm should be regular with one exception, and that would be uh, the polymorphic, polymorphic VT, which means that uh, uh, a VT occurring as a result of multiple ectopic foci in the ventricle. One example of a polymorphic VT would be torsade de point, which means twisting of the points. And there's an example of torsade de point in uh, the ECG exercises at the back of my book. So we'll take a look at that later. Now, the criteria for VTAC, short runs of VTAC, is um, simply um, three ventricular ectopic beats in a row. Let's see here. I thought I had numbered those. Good. So uh, that would be a short run of VTAC. And um, so if you see three ventricular complexes in a row at a rate of 100 or greater, that would be considered a short run of VTAC. And the thing to um, remember clinically about VTAC, let me just go back to our previous slide here. So when you have someone in a VTAC, they can pr uh, present anywhere along the clinical uh, scale. Uh, some patients will have VTAC and will be perfectly stable and asymptomatic. Some will present with shortness of breath and chest pain. Others will present hemodynamically unstable, and those are candidates for electrical therapy. And others still will present in full cardiac arrest. The pulseless and apnea can require uh, full ACLS uh, cardiac arrest management. Um, some have short bouts of VTAC, and uh, as with sinus arrest and SVTs, what you want to ascertain is how long are these bouts of VTAC, how frequently do they occur, and what kinds of signs and symptoms does a patient have when they have uh, these bouts of VTAC? Are they having syncopal episodes? Are they having um, short of breath, nausea, vomiting, chest discomfort? And important to report these when you arrive at hospital.